I'm interested in people being able to have different choices and, um, and having equality of outcome. Aha, well, so the overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male. Now, do you want to equalize that, just out of curiosity? I, what about bricklayers? They're 99% male. And, the, and we've got about three quarters of, of the population now in universities mm -hmm. in the humanities and social sciences are female. Yeah. Are we going to equalize that? And well, men, men work more longer hours. They work more dangerous jobs. They're more likely to move. They're more likely to work outside. They're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable. They make more money for those reasons. And that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. It's a very simplistic analysis. I thought we were talking about masculinity. We are. No, we're not. Yes, we are. How are we talking about masculinity? Because I'm asking you what you think of men and of women. Isn't no, basically that... what you've been trying to do, I would say for the last 15 minutes, is put me into a sequence of corners by accusing me of various forms of misbehavior. The Ministry of Women's Affairs in New Zealand and the Minister of Women's Affairs, or the Minister for Women as she's known, suggested recently that there were too many white old men on boards in New Zealand of private and public companies and just suggested that they needed to move aside so there could be more diversity. Your response to that suggestion? Well, um, what, what's her racial and ethnic background, just out of curiosity? I, I think uh, she's born in America, Julianne Genta. Um, she's a member of our <laughs> Green Party here. Is she white? Yes. Well, maybe it's time for her to bloody well move aside and let someone who isn't white have her position. That's pure narcissism at work, by the way. You know, to hijack, a, to hijack an event like this that other people put time and effort into and to use the, their, their civility of the crowd and the civility of the organizers as an excuse to blatantly yell out your ill-informed opinions is no way to conduct a civil dialogue. It's absolutely appalling. The people who do that should be embarrassed. Do you think a trans woman is a real woman? I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. You know, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies and they have female genitalia and they have an XX chromosome. and. And I think the biological markers are relevant. Why are you against the use of alternate pronouns? I'm, not, I'm against the use of, of le legislation to determine what words are that myself and other people are required to utter. But would you use alternate pronouns if a student asked you to? I think I've made my position on that clear already. Well, perhaps not to our audience at home who are just being introduced to this. Would you use alternate no. pronouns? And why not? I, because I don't believe that other people have the right to determine what language I use, especially when it's backed by punitive legislation. And when the words that are being required are the constructions, they're artificial constructions of people I regard as radical ideologues whose viewpoint I do not share. In the video you said that the problem with those angry women is that since at the end of the argument you cannot fight physically, you can't really deal with them. <laughs> That's not what I said. I said that that's one of the things that keeps conversation between men civil. Women can't argue with angry women. Women are often bullied by angry women. What I meant was more, uh, you, uh, you, you, you said that, and I'm really like not trying to paraphrase you or you know, to put words into your mouth. Uh, you, you, you actually you you are trying that no, directly. No, it is things that you said, that you cannot deal with uh, those Yes, uh, but don't tell me that you're not trying to put they're words hysterical into my mouth because and all you've this. selected so what you're going to ask, and you selected it very carefully with a tremendous amount of forethought. Well, I, no, and I, there's a purpose for that. What is the purpose precisely? I am, I am quoting things that you said. Why? 
Because, what is it that because, you're trying because, to establish? Because you said that. I'm I thought we were talking about masculinity. We are. No, we're not. Yes, we are. What? How are we talking about masculinity? Because I'm asking you what you think of men and of women. Isn't no, that... basically what you've been trying to do, I would say, for the last 15 minutes is put me into a sequence of corners by accusing me of various forms of misbehavior. So why are we doing that? What's the point here? These are things that you said. Uh, my That's job my as a journalist is to ask questions about what you represent and the ideas that you defend. Your, isn't your it? job is also to select the things that you might ask about in some manner that doesn't indicate a substantive bias. You picked three things to talk to me about in the last 20 minutes that were very carefully selected. Like, why did you pick those things? Because this is my job. No, not necessarily. You could be asking me, for example, why I've spoken to 250,000 people live in the last eight months. That might be more newsworthy. Well, we're not going to have a, a big debate about journalism, but uh, if a journalist doesn't ask the tough questions, how can you give the good answers? Well, it depends on what the tough questions are. It depends well, on the I didn't way, think whether that they would be tough. We're talking about things that you said. I mean, if it's easier to have conversation between men, because there is this underlying threat, you know, of a uh, physical uh, contact. I don't think it's you, easier. Mm. It tends to be somewhat more civil. A uh, question uh, for Professor Peterson. Um, why do you feel that someone's personal gender identity and pronouns infringes your free speech? Can one not also argue, based on your interpretation, that professors can use racial slurs in their classroom um, and the, that the inability to do so would violate their freedom of speech? There's a difference between saying that there's something you can't say and saying that there are things that you have to say. And I regard these made-up pronouns, all of them, as the neologisms of radical PC authoritarians. Do you understand that? And I don't, I'm not a fan of that sort of person. And the reason I'm not a fan of that sort of person is because I've done my homework. I've read everything I can get my hands on in the development of authoritarian political systems, and I know the literature inside out and backwards. And I am not going to be a mouthpiece for language that I detest. And that's that. As you might imagine, you've been a topic of conversation on this campus a lot in the past week or so, certainly among a lot of us who discuss politics. And one of the things that sort of united people who like and dislike a lot of your ideas is that we appreciate your defense of free speech, and we appreciate you coming here to talk about it with us. Uh, but one of the things I thought was really interesting is Professor Van Dyke addressed the distinction between you and Jonathan Haidt. And you mentioned this as sort of a temperamental one. And I think, I'm, I'm sure that's true to some extent, but I, I noticed you've, you've made a lot of more sort of substantively inflammatory claims, like in the course of this lecture, you called uh, pe the authors of Facebook posts demons and totalitarians. Uh, in past events, you've called them things like uh, neo-Marxists, cultural Marxists. Uh, you've called them, a, a, I believe, a fifth column that is committing treason against the West. And it seems to me this is more than temperamental. This is a substantive difference. And, and it's a substantive yes. difference, and, yes. And another thing you've done is that unlike Haidt, you have a more sort of comprehensive political program. You've talked a lot in defense of traditional hierarchies, both of gender, of class, so on, uh, though emphatically not of race. Uh, and so it seems that... I haven't talked about defense of traditional hierarchies in terms of gender and class. That's not true. Well, you've talked about hierarchies in society. You've talked yeah, about... Yeah, that's yes. true. I well, have done that. Not but that I haven't class? justified them on the basis of gender and class. You, like, you, whatever it well, okay, categories. But you, you talk not about, okay. That's an important yes, distinction. Okay, but you, you defend hierarchies in society in a way that... You talk a lot about the Pareto distribution, yes? That doesn't mean I yeah. defend it. Well, okay. You, no, you, not well, yes. okay. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you talk Observing a lot... Observing that something exists is yes. not the same as defending it. How in the world... Well, people attack it, right? What's that? And you don't. People attack it. Attack as inherently what? Attack the hierarchies of society as inherently unjust, right? Well, they are, they're unjust, yes. but they're also useful. Okay, so you, you, def you say they're useful. Some well, look, people look, look at it this way. Okay, look at it this way. You obviously think that it's worthwhile to stand up and ask a question. Yes. So you think that standing up and asking a question is better than yes. not standing up and asking a question. Yes. Okay, that's a hierarchy. Yes. Of values. Yes. Okay, without the hierarchy of values, you couldn't act. Of course. No, no, not of course. Well, wait. It's you, partly why I'm I, defending I the hierarchy. Here. Without no a hierarchy, there's no the impetus to act. Hierarchy, right? What's that? There is a hierarchy in society, right? No, there's multiple hierarchies okay, there are in multiple society. hierarchies in society, right? Yes. And you say that they are based in, you, you invoke the lobster, right? That they are based in, uh, in nature. 
Yes. I said that they were inevitable. Yes, yes. that they were inevitable. Some right. people that disagree with that. That they're but, good. But my point is that uh, this is generally relevant to it. You have a broader point than free speech. This is one of the things you talk about. Yes. Yes. Okay. Whereas I think there are some other activists who focus on more exclusively. I'm not on an free activist. Speech. Marxists say, well, that wasn't real Marxism. What it really means, and I've thought about this for a long time, it's the most arrogant possible statement anyone could ever make. It means if I would have been in Stalin's position, I would have ushered in the damn utopia instead, instead of the genocidal massacres because I understand the doctrine of Marxism and everything about me is good. It's like, well, think again, sunshine. You don't understand it. You don't understand it. And you're not that good. And if the power was in your hands, assuming you had the competence, which you don't, you wouldn't have done any better. And even if you had, there would have been someone else waiting right behind you to shoot you the first time you actually tried to do anything good. And that's what happened to all the old guard who ran the damn revolution. Stalin rounded them all up and shot them, along with their families and millions of other people. So even if you do happen to be that avatar of moral purity that you claim implicitly, the probability that you'd get to act out your goodness in relationship to those possessed by your ideology is zero. I would say that anybody with more than a cursory knowledge of 20th century history who dares to claim simultaneously that they have compassion for the downtrodden and that they're Marxists, are revealing either their an ignorance of history that's so astounding that it's actually a form of miracle or a kind of <laughs> or a kind of malevolence that's so reprehensible that it's almost unspeakable because we already ran the equity experiment over the course of the 20th century and we already know what the the Marxist doctrines have done for oppressed people all around the world and the answer to that mostly was imprison them, enslave them, work them to death or execute them and as far as I can tell that's not precisely commensurate with any message of compassion. Sorry, tried that, didn't work. We got a hundred million corpses to prove it and that's plenty for me and if it's not enough for you well then you should do some serious thinking either about your historical knowledge or about your moral character. We talk about you know feminizing men, it almost sounds derogatory. It's almost as if you're saying that to be feminine or to express any sort of femininity is actually inferior to masculinity. Um, and I think that is a huge problem even with within the language that we use. You know, when you say, don't be such a girl, don't be such a pussy, the, the greatest insults that men can give each other tend to have feminine or origins, like, you know, as I said, pussy or faggot um, or anything like that. And I think, again, that speaks to um, a very systematic um, inequality uh, between the genders. Um, and, yeah, and you attributed the, the, the uh, rates of mental illness among men to their inability to express, say, sentimental emotions. Well, and I don't think there's a shred of clinical evidence to support well, that stance. I, sorry. Um, no, no, no. Carry no on. What, well, I don't think there's a shred of evidence I mean, to support that stance. The kind of violence, for example, that I, Lawrence is discussing is a consequence of competitive. Um, Competitive violence a young, among young men. Is, as I think, as there, is, I think there is some evidence that men find yes. it difficult to talk about things, and that that um, and they also ways in which you can help out. young men to they, talk about they, things. Now, the evidence for yeah. the differential rates of, of mental health and suffering. I, also, I don't I think know, so. I also don't think I, um, when you're talking about things being so innate. Um, you know, I mean, Judith Butler would have said that, you know, gender is a construct, that gender is a performance. Mm -hmm. um, well, Judith Butler look, doesn't know what she's talking about in the least, so well, I don't accept that. I mean, that that's a, interesting, a, but I, I, she's I, no I scientist. agree with her. She doesn't know the well, psychological literature. Like